We're here today at Laundry Street, Salford, in the Brindleith area, close to the proximity of Cock Robin Bridge, the scene of many tragic incidents in Salford's chequered history, including several fatalities. If you'll come with me, I'll tell you about them and we'll take it from there. The first story comes from 1883 and concerns a mother and daughter, Emma and Elizabeth Johnson. It's a rather sad, tragic case. Uh, they were charged with the murder of an infant, concealing its birth and disposing of his body. Now, the story is it's, it's bizarre to say the least. James Lewis of Nuttall Street told Salford Magistrates Court that he was fishing in the nearby canal when he saw a bundle of rags hurled over the Cock Robin Bridge behind me and land at his side. He shouted up to the person your bundle hasn't gone in the canal. To which they replied, don't worry, it's only a dead cat. He opened the bundle to reveal a dead infant. The couple appeared at Salford Magistrates Court, charged with the offences I mentioned earlier. Now sadly, I don't know the outcome of the court case. I should imagine they would have been in prison for all this, but what a tragic, tragic tale. And to describe a dead infant as being, don't worry, it's only a kitten. Cat even. Dreadful. The next story, we go to 1915, uh, concerns a lady called Emily Hamer. Uh, her husband was serving at the Western Front with the Manchester Regiment. Sadly, she was having an affair with a chap called John Pendlebury. Now, the affair came to light when Hamer's sister saw her coming at the local cinema and told her it's got to stop. It's morally wrong and your husband's fighting for his country. Matters came to a head one night in the house when they'd had a few drinks. They decided to walk a chap home who'd been drinking with them. They got as far as Cock Robin Bridge, basically where I am now, and they told him to carry on walking and they'd meet up with him later on. This never happened. The next day both bodies were fished out of the canal. An inquest was held and they'd found obviously they'd been drowned but alcohol was found in the body. Now, was this a double suicide? A drunken accident? We'll never know, but uh, it's a bit much, isn't it, having an affair when your husband's away fighting for king and country. But that was the outcome for Mrs. Hamer. The next story comes from March 1963, and it's a tale of murder, revenge even, but it's a, a tale of unrequited love. Dalip Singh Kumar, aged 24, had come from India to study law in Britain. He however got a job working at a company behind me called Brands as a costing accountant. He was only a young man, 24 years of age, and there he met and fell in love with a girl called Kathleen Parkinson. She was slightly older than him. She worked in the same office. Now, they did go on several dates, as to be said, to Manchester Opera House for one. Now, for some reason, Kumar got it in his head that she was in love with him, and it was clear that she wasn't. He even wrote to his mother in India asking for money because he was going to be married to the woman. Kathleen Parkinson knew nothing about this. Matters came to a head at work, arguments. It was quite plain she didn't want to know the man. Now, Kumar took this very, very badly. He told friends that she'd belittled him, embarrassed him, made a fool of him in front of his friends and in public and workmates and none of this was true basically, he just, his mind was running away with him. In fact he even had a nervous breakdown and attempted suicide. He came back to work, which surprised me, and was put in the same offices with Kathleen. His mental condition deteriorated and on the 23rd of March, he was to take a terrible vengeance on Bonham. On the morning of Wednesday, 27th of March, 1963, Kumar was observed by several people loitering just where I am now, at the steps of this bridge, pacing up and down, and he was waiting for Kathleen Parkinson to walk down this very street we're on. She would, well, she lived in Pendlebury, so she would have got a bus to Pendleton Church and had to walk over these steps to accompany Brands. 
Charles Wilson was a driver employed by a company called Snowden and Bridges. Now, this was nine o'clock in the morning. He was loading his lorry and he heard screams, shouts, and he was mortified to see Kathleen staggering into the workplace, bleeding profusely. All she could say was, I've been hit, I've been hit. She was immediately rushed to Salford Royal Hospital, but sadly was found to be dead on her arrival. She had received six stab wounds to her body, head, neck and chest, which proved to be fatal. Sergeant Stanley Wilson from Salford Constabulary arrived on the scene and he noticed Kumar lying in a pool of blood. He went to his assistants and he asked him, have you stabbed Kathleen? And he replied, he had. He too was rushed to Salford Royal Hospital. He had injuries self-inflicted to his lungs and chest. Now, his life was saved and he was charged with the murder of Kathleen. Now the detectives on the scene found a briefcase belonging to Kuma and inside it they found a photograph of Kathleen and on the back of it he'd written in pencil which I found this incredibly strange if not disturbing. What do you expect from an uncivilised man from an uncivilised country? And on her face he'd written the words civilised. It's disturbing isn't it really? He appeared at Salford Magistrates before the stipendiary magistrate, Mr Leslie Walsh, who I'm sure many people will remember, and not with great affection. He listened to the case and Kuma explained to him that he had no intention of killing Kathleen. His sole intention was to beg for forgiveness and then in a final act of horror, he was going to commit suicide in front of her to prove his love. Well, if you can figure that one out, you're a better man than me, I can. He was obviously remanded into custody and appeared at Manchester Crown Court charged with the murder. The jury decided that Kumar was guilty of manslaughter on the grounds of diminished mental responsibility and received a, a sentence of life imprisonment. It's a, it's a shocking story of, an, as I say, an unrequited love and a young life so tragically snuffed out. So the next time you pass over Cot Robin Bridge, try and spare a thought for young Kathleen, a young woman, 24, with a, a life ahead of her, so cruelly snuffed out. Cheers. Whenever you're ready. Okay. I've been asked on several occasions, what the <laughs> that's a real blooper, isn't it? <laughs> I've been asked on several occasions why the name Cock Robin Bridge. Now, I've looked into this and apparently, or allegedly, it comes from when the bridges were constructed, they had metal hoops, arches over the top of them. And it was observed that they did indeed look like a bird's cage, a robin's cage. That's a story I was told and I, I tend to believe it. There are several bridges in Salford that have earned a soubriquet of you can't write. Okay, yeah, okay, I've got it, I've got it, don't worry. There are several bridges in Salford that have earned the soubriquet of Cock Robin Bridge, or even Donkey Bridge, which was a bridge facing the famous Red Cow Pub in Salford. But that is how it got its name, and I believe it. What got into the distance, touch it. That did. It's a rather sad, tragic case. He appeared at Salford Magistrates, basically charged with infan infanticide. Also, murder. Oh, hang on, that's it's a rather sad, tragic case. Uh, they were charged with the murder of an infant and also of disposal. I can't get rid of that. Conceal the birth of this one. Yeah, right. Okay? Yeah. Charged with the murder of an infant. Oh, yeah, it's gone. Right, sorry, Carl. Sorry, mate. Go. Chat by the Jake. A chap by the name of James Nuttall. No, it wasn't. It's was James Lewis and Nuttall. <laughs> right. James, that's his save me. Go back to May 7th, March 73, wasn't it? Sorry, Carl. Sorry. Um, a fatal murder. Well, there's no. How can it not be a fucking murder? That'd be fatal. For <laughs> sake. <laughs> right, start again. 
it's a, a tale of unrequited love. Um, a chap called Cali, oh, a chap called Dalit Kumar, right? Let's start again. A chap by the name of Dalit King Sumar. Oh, was it? <laughs> Singh, Dalit Singh Kumar, right? So, a chap by the name of Dalit. <laughs> He's making me laugh. 